What's up, everybody? Uh, Scott X1307 uh, here today to uh, do a video for the five favorite storylines comic tag that's been going around. I was uh, I just watched the video a little earlier, um, and uh, I believe it was a week ago. Uh, I was tagged by uh, John. Uh, Sandman Logan 5. I'll leave a link to his channel. Um, you can go check that out if you haven't uh, seen any of John's videos. Um, but uh, this tag for the five favorite storylines. Um, thanks for the tag. I, uh, I, I really appreciate it. Um, this is fun digging through the boxes trying to, to figure out what my five favorite uh, stories would be that's actually pretty difficult um, so many great storylines out there um, so many you know storylines that are just everybody knows because they're so good and then you have the storylines that are enjoyable to you and maybe not everybody likes um, it was it was really difficult um, I pulled out like all this um, going through and I'll just show you these are I guess honorable mentions um, and like everything that's you know opinion based a month from now we could do another tag uh, of this nature and my favorite storylines may have changed uh, at least top five uh, you know things are always shifting but uh, the crow uh, the whole original miniseries by uh, James O'Barr I had to think really hard on that one. Uh, Days of Future Past from X Men, huge X Men fan, and this is definitely you know one of the better X Men stories, one of my favorites. This is uh, I think an often overlooked story. Uh, it's an Elseworlds from DC, Golden Age. It's by uh, James Robinson with. Some great uh, Paul Smith art, uh, and it's exactly what you see. It's about the golden age of DC heroes, um, uh, kind of like after they change everything with Crisis on Infinite Earths. So there's no Superman, Batman. Um, I don't believe there's Wonder Woman. I could be wrong, but it's Golden Age Green Lantern, Flash, Sandman, Hawkman, and. It's just a really cool story. Um, they're fighting the Nazis. Uh, it's got Hitler in it. Uh, it's just very, very cool. And the final book is just... Uh, uh, it's only a four-issue uh, miniseries. And the, the final story is just uh, incredible. One of the best fights in comics. Um, that almost made it. Um, Robocop. Versus Terminator, another really good story. I think uh, gets overlooked a lot. Um, great uh, Walter Simonson art. Uh, it's just really cool how they did this story here. <coughs> uh, <coughs> and of course, Marvels. Um, just uh, the history of the Marvel universe uh, is told from a civilian. Um, he's a, a photographer for. Um, ends up being a photographer for the Daily Bugle, but uh, just really cool to see, you know, the Marvel Universe from that point of view. Um, Alex Ross art, incredible. Kingdom Come, another Else Worlds. This was just amazing. Great Alex Ross art again in this. And. Uh, the Age of Apocalypse storyline when uh, from X-Men. Um, it's really cool to see the alternate uh, 
alternate universe of the X Men there. Um, so those those are some of the stories that didn't, at least this time, didn't quite make the top five. <coughs> so I have my top five here, and um, these are here because I have read these multiple times. Each time I read them, they're just as good as the first time I read them, um, if not better. And usually, I notice something, even if it's just a small thing. Maybe it's something in the art on one panel. Um, maybe it's another uh, context to the story. Um, you know, often we'll notice something new that I didn't read, notice the first two or three or four times I read them. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it just I don't know see that that's to me that's what makes a you know a great story when you can read it over and over it's like a great movie um, you know when you can watch it over and over and get the same amount of enjoyment or close to it as the first time uh, that you read it or saw it and uh, I think these <coughs> excuse me I think these uh I think it's a pretty good top five here. So I'm going to start off with uh, Batman Grindel, uh, Devil's Riddle, and Devil's Mask. It's a two issue uh, prestige format, little mini series from uh, uh, DC and Comico. And uh, this is what introduced me to Grindel. And uh, great uh, Matt Wagner art. Um, but what I really liked about this is seeing Batman face an opponent that was very, very much like him, um, but very different as well. But they are so much alike. They're both highly intelligent, um, both great fighters. Um, it just, I don't know, it kind of, kind of brought out the best of both characters. To me and uh, I've read these two issues I don't know at least uh, five or six times and uh, they're just as good every time um, Grendel made the perfect opponent for Batman um, and vice versa Batman is was a great opponent for Grendel um, so definitely had to put that in there and I always love these covers. This just incredible. Uh, and then from Vertigo, I have uh, Sandman, and this is uh, this is actually the trade uh, season of Miss. This storyline here, which uh, involved uh, Lucifer. Um, basically giving up the keys to uh, to hell um, you get to see uh, some other gods uh, like there's Odin DC's version of Thor and Odin um, some Egyptian gods they're representatives from the fairy kingdom um, Japanese uh, pantheon Just uh, a number of uh, different characters, and even some other the higher demons of hell, um, like Azazel. They're all trying to get the key to hell. Um, it's been left to Sand to Sandman to dream. Uh, it also involves a story where, um, I guess, thousands of years ago, uh, Sandman was uh, he had a lover this woman um, her name was Nada in ADA and she I forget exactly what happened but um, she spurned him in some way and he had her locked up in hell uh, for no other reason than that very selfish and he uh, he goes to to freer and 
you also see, uh, I believe, the birth of Daniel, which will be uh, Dream's son. And always loved uh, the last uh, couple of pages because you get to see uh, Lucifer's left hell. He's giving it up. He's just sitting on a beach. And uh, he makes a remark about uh, uh, God being right or uh, someone being right that, you know, sunsets are incredible. Um, yeah, he says, all right, I'll admit it. He's got a point. Um, I guess it's, it's this guy that sits here next to him. He's just a guy that's on the beach. And he says, uh, the sunsets are bloody marvelous. Um, just I thought that was cool gave another dimension to Lucifer and then you get to see uh, Sandman actually he ends up giving the key uh, to the kingdom of hell to a couple of angels um, since it was created by uh, God uh, he felt that it should return uh, to him so he gave it to a couple of angels and they're put in charge uh, and one of them, one kind of laments the role, and the other one s seems to uh, seems to actually start enjoying their role as the leaders of hell or the caretakers of hell. Um, it's just very cool, very cool. But uh, this whole this whole trade here follows this one storyline, Season of Mist, uh, and it was originally printed um, Sandman Issues 21 to 28, so very highly recommended. I've read this several times, and it's just, it, this is a great story. Works on many, many levels, too. Okay, next... Um, <clears throat> This is the uh, this is a series that introduced me to another great character, and this kind of involves heaven and hell as well. Um, it's from Sirius Entertainment. It's Joseph Michael Linsner's Dawn. This is uh, from the Lucifer's Halo uh, miniseries. Incredible Linsner art, and uh, the character Dawn is just um, an amazing character to me. Um, I mean, but uh, she is the goddess. Um, she is able to travel freely between heaven and hell. Um, she's married to death, which you can see here, the horned god, who is kind of above both heaven and hell. They don't really control death. Death just is. Um which makes her the goddess of birth and rebirth and uh, it's really cool you get to see a post-apocalyptic uh, uh, New York and a uh, character in here is Darian Ashoka um, and you end up finding out he's like the earthly uh, incarnation of death in, uh, in human form and uh, she kind of follows him around uh, it's just a I thought it was a great story um, she kind of plays around with uh, with Lucifer and with uh, uh, with God, uh, kind of taunts them and and things like that. And um, I just always think that's neat to read. Um, and again, it's another one that I've read multiple times and always enjoy. Great art, great story, I think, and uh, just it never gets old to me. And then uh, let's see, we're at number four. Uh, not these are not really any particular order, but uh, we have here from uh, what well, is a storyline ran through the X titles from the '90s: X Men, X Force, X Factor, um, Uncanny X Men. Um, this was Executioner Song. Um, it was the first big X-Men crossover event that I read as uh, it was released 
uh, in its entirety. I think uh, Extinction Agenda caught the end of that when I first started collecting X-Men. Uh, but this is the one that I, I read from beginning to end as it was released. Um, not, not the greatest story ever written. Uh, it does have some pretty good art. Uh, it's Brandon Peterson, Greg Capullo, and others. What I liked about it is it gave you more background and more history of Cable. And uh, the character Strife, and we find out, is actually a clone of Cable without the techno-organic virus. Kind of shows uh, Cable at his ultimate potential. Um, but it ends up, Strife is raised by Apocalypse in the future. Um, and he comes back to the past. Uh, he had popped up in stories here and there, in X-Force and stuff. Uh, but you never really got to see what he was all about until this. Um, and you know it's kind of the story just it spoke to me about family because it involves Cyclops and Havoc uh, which are brothers and of course Cyclops being father of Cable um, you know Cable was taken to the future when he was infected with the organic virus they had the, uh, the ability to, to save him um, you end up finding out it's actually Cable's own telekinetic powers which keeps the virus from taking over his entire body. But, uh, Strife sees him as, you know, a brother, uh, the imperfect version of himself, and uh, it's, re it's, it's, it's really cool to see that. And um, it ends with, you know, Cable apparently sacrificing himself to save... Um, the X-Men save the world by taking out Strife so he has to take out his own clone it's kind of his own brother uh, his twin shall we say um, to save everybody and I know reading that for the first time uh, it was just really cool and um, it's a storyline I've read many times and it's always just as good I said, not the greatest story, not the greatest X-Men story. I mean, Days of Future Past is a better story, um, but for some reason, this one always sticks out in my head. Uh, he said, probably because it was the first big crossover uh, event that I read all together when it when it uh, was released. But uh, I think it's a little underrated today. Uh, it's a little better than most people give it credit. And finally, we have something um, a little newer. Uh, it's only a couple years old. But I loved this story uh, from the first issue. Um, it's a six-issue miniseries from Avatar uh, by Garth Ennis and uh, artist Michael DiPascale. I think that's how you pronounce it. <coughs> this story is all about friendship and the things that friends and I guess you know by extension family you know everybody has those um, at least I hope everybody has or has had those friends that become like family to you um, and become like brothers uh, or sisters um, and you would do just about anything for them and that's that's to me that's what this story is all about uh, Rover Red Charlie. Um, there is some disease uh, that uh, starts affecting humans in this world. And they basically start speaking gibberish and start killing one another just for no reason. Um, and the animals, all the pets are kind of left to, def to fend for themselves. Uh, these three friends here end up traveling across country um, you know like in all apocalyptic stories you always, they always hear you know this place is safe and this place is safe they hear the west coast is is actually safe that the humans there are not affected like always ends up being untrue but um, this story really is about the journey not about the destination and they they fight for one another they find food for one another they go through hell together 
and come out on the other side. Um, I think stronger for it, better for it. Um, just a great story. And even though it's a, only a couple years old, um, I've already read through this uh, two or three times. And it's just, uh, it's an incredible story, I think. Um, quickly became one of my favorites. So, that's, uh, that would be my, at this time, my five favorite storylines. Batman Grendel, Sandman Sees the Miss, Dawn Lucifer's Halo, the X-Men uh, crossover event, Executioner Storyline, or Executioner Song, and then Rover Red Charlie. Uh, like I said, those are just my favorites. I'm not saying those are the best stories ever written, but uh, these are the ones that kind of speak to me uh, personally. So, um, If you haven't read any of these and you decide to check them out, I hope you like them. I think they're all really good. Um, so... But uh, and if you do, you know, let me know what you think. Um, so, I guess that'll do it. Uh, now I need to, um, I need to tag um, three people. Uh, let's see. Not. Uh, Hundred percent sure who has been tagged already. I'll try to get three people who ha who haven't been tagged. So, um, tell you what. Well, one person I think uh, would have some very interesting stories. Um, would be. Uh, Comic Quarter uh, 410, Matt. Um, let's see. How about AG Surfer? And I'd like to hear uh, as well. How about uh, Comets Quest, Ira? So, uh, Matt, Comet Holder 410, uh, AG Surfer, and uh, Comets Quest. Um, I think they'll have some very cool stories in their favorites. Uh, so, yeah, I'll tag those three guys, um, try to send them a message to let them know. Uh, so, Thanks again, John, for the tag. Um, it was very cool and to go through these stories um, and remember, try to remember uh, what they were about. Um, difficult to pick five favorite, uh, but there we go. Uh, so, hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And until next time, like always, take care. And keep reading those books. Later.